right, so let's talk about some of the top stocks that are members see value in. So I asked on Instagram, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, it's the third link in the description down below. I asked them what stocks would you guys like me to break down this week? And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So we got uh, Div Divya asked me about Lululemon. I actually just made a video about Lululemon. And uh, the reason I made this was because when it reported earnings, it aggressively sold off, not because it missed earnings, but because um, its guidance was off for 2024. Now it's still an active sell-off, so it's just something that I'm adding to my watch list. This thing doesn't have to indicate any signs of a reversal anytime soon, but again, it's extremely oversold. It offers about 44% uh, potential of a uh, recovery uh, from current price points to previous highs. Uh, and obviously it's an extremely bullish stock over a long period of time. So uh, this thing meets all of my criteria for a swing trade. It just doesn't have confirmation of a reversal just yet. So definitely a stock that I'm adding to my watch list. I already plugged it into my risk to reward ratio calculator uh, and as a 15 RRR, so risk to reward ratio uh, based off of my desired entry of 350 and my desired exit of 500 with a stop loss of 340. So uh, that's the first one. The next one I'm going to break down is Nikola. So this is from Christopher asking for me to break down uh, Nikola. So Nikola based off of previous trading prices. Again, I personally wouldn't trade something like this. Um, I don't like penny stocks. Uh, this thing has just been going through a, I mean, I, I think it's going to go bankrupt. Um, I mean, they've been through lawsuits at one point they're valued more than Ford itself when all the hype was present and it's consistently sold off again, direction, true direction for this is extremely bearish. It does have moments where it tries to rally. I would take profits right away. These rallies never last. They haven't lasted it in its history before you guys can see that it rallies from time to time. Every time they say that it's something different. It's something new. If you want to continue to hold, you're an adult, you can do whatever it is that you want. Uh, in my opinion, I think it's super high risk. Um, high risk, high reward. Uh, and overall, it's a strong descending pattern with its true direction being extremely bearish. So because of that, I would say take profits. And I think that it's just going to return back to previous lows of 58 cents per share and until it gets delisted and goes to zero. Uh, so let's talk about uh, QQQ uh, by Thamer on Instagram asking for me to break down uh, the overall NASDAQ ETF. Uh, so I'm really glad that you brought that one up because uh, as of right now, NASDAQ was testing its support at the moving average. So based off of what's to come this week, uh, if you guys aren't aware, uh, we have an inflation report. I will be live streaming it for free. So just another reason to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, but CPI data report is going to be on Wednesday, um, April 10th. And it's going to be one hour before the market opens. So just be aware of that. Um, and as you guys can see right now, we're at the moving average. We'll see where we end up by the end of the week. If this inflation report comes in higher than what is expected, be ready for a nice little sell off. If this inflation, uh, inflation report comes in lower than what is expected, then maybe we'll make new highs. Market's been incredibly bullish. It's been finding any and every reason to try to go up. The reason it kind of sold off yesterday towards Thursday and Friday is because a president for the Federal Reserve stated that inflation is sticky and that they can't see cutting interest rates anytime soon. Again, that was not Jerome Powell. That was just the Fed president for a specific state. So please understand that. As of right now, it's going to be very interesting to see. Okay. Are we finally going to break below the moving average and show signs of progress? Because we have not done that in all of 2024. So it'd be the first time and it'd be a step in the right direction for the bears. But again, market's been incredibly bullish. It's been finding any and every reason to try to go up. So there's no reason to try to jump the gun and be too aggressive with entering too early. So I would say wait, especially for that CPI report. A lot of people don't even like trading and leading up to that report because market can be very volatile and market can be very choppy. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. I'm just going to do two more. Uh, so we have AVGO by Magda. So AVGO, let me go ahead and break this one down. So this one's quite the opposite of kind of like Nikola, right? Incredibly bullish stock. You guys can see higher highs and higher lows based off of that four hour time frame. And yeah, even on the day, uh, on the day chart, higher highs, higher lows, now trading at $1,400 per share. Um, it's a little bit on the overbought side for me. So because of that, it looks like it's, you know, partook in this rally already and I've kind of missed out on it. If I were to plug this into my risk to reward ratio calculator, that downside potential would be significantly greater than my upside uh, potential for growth. And to me, it looks a little bit more on the overbought side. You get kind of like how NASDAQ market looks like to me, right? NASDAQ market looks incredibly overbought. Obviously, it's very bullish. So that's why I wouldn't want to short it. But it's very overbought that I just would respect and be like, okay, you've, you've had your rally. You might still run up a little bit. 
but the downside is so, so high that I'm just not going to trade it. Uh, and that's how I see AVGO. I see the downside and pullback potential to be so great. I just wouldn't even risk it when it comes down to that. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Carvana. So C, V, and A. So Carvana. Let's go ahead and break this one down. This one had an amazing performance in 2020 uh, leading up to 2021 and then aggressively sold off and it's been trying to recover ever since. On the four hour time frame, you guys can see that we're a little bit more on the overbought side. It has these rallies then corrects itself, rallies, I wouldn't be surprised if it corrects itself. Looks like we had a small, slight correction already, finding its support and maybe going back to retest. So maybe for a, a small day trade uh, from $85 back up to 94, I can see that. But other than that, if we end up breaking below the moving average, then be ready for this thing to pull about, pull on back to the lows of 50 and that's on the four hour time frame. So um, other than that, um, I have a breakdown request for Apple and that is from Geary. So Apple breakdown. Apple's a stock that I've added to my watch list, um, but the only reason that I have not purchased it is because the NASDAQ market is incredibly overbought. And if the NASDAQ market finally begins to crash or correct itself, then Apple will most likely follow, but Apple's already cheap. So that means that it's going to send it lower for longer, right? So Apple is very cheap at 169 based off of previous highs of around $200 per share, but it's not indicating signs of growth. There's been a lot of decline uh, in growth for Apple um, and just especially when it just comes down to the technicals. Lower highs, lower lows, and testing its previous support of 170. I think it's something to watch, but if NASDAQ market continues or begins to sell off, then I would be ready for this thing to pull on back even longer. So again, that's kind of just been another reason on why I've been um, kind of hesitant to try to buy the dip on Apple because of where NASDAQ market currently stands. So I love Apple. I love the recovery potential. It's an incredibly bullish stock over a long period of time. It's just kind of going through a little rut in 2024 as it's been seeing more signs of decline uh, than growth in all of 2024, right? Starting at prices of almost $200 per share all the way down to 170. So definitely something to keep an eye on, but maybe not something that we have to buy the dip on right now, especially if it continues to descend and not indicate any signs of an up trend. So other than that, again, this risk to reward ratio calculator can be found for free on techbudsolutions.com. It's under trading tools, which you guys all have access to. You guys just scroll on down. This is our economic calendar. You can click on more trading tools or just click, click on trading tools right on over here. And also if you want to sign up and join LPP, you can just click right on over here and then we break it down for you again being able to watch me trade live every single day right at market open. If you're anything like me, I learn so much better by watching other people do. And if you want to watch me trade live the next time the market opens, it's the second link in the description down below. You get to see all of my entries, all of my exits, but most importantly, you get to hear my thought process behind every trade I take. And again, it's 50% off right now. And that's the second link in the description down below. I appreciate your time. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take care team.